Hi everybody, welcome to Will and Roll Arts. I'm Leslie. Today I continue my never ending story diorama. This is where the characters meet up in the forest in the beginning of the book. It's the rock biter and the night hob and his bat, the racing snail and gluck gluck and the will-o'-wisp. Let's get started. So I start by making a box for my diorama. I cut this out of my laser cutter. This is approximately 16 inches wide by five inches tall, I believe. I'm just gonna paint everything black just for a base coat. And right here I'm measuring where I want to place the rock biter. I am just sketching a little area where I'm gonna place the rock biter's feet. I'm going to have them in a sitting position. To make my trees, I am using a mixture of glue and paint. If you've been following my channel, you know I love to make trees, and this is the super easy way to make trees in a diorama. And I want the trees to appear as though they're continuing on beyond the diorama, so I'm making the front of the trees. To get the feel of the bark, you just kind of scrunch up your tissue paper and then Place the glue and paint mixture all over. You can just do a glue and water mixture to start, but I kind of like cut out a step and I add the paint right to it. I am doing mixtures of black and brown paint. So here I am starting with the rock biter's feet. I am not gonna to try to pronounce that name he has. I will post it right here. I am using a mixture of scrunched up tin foil, air drying clay, and my tissue paper mache mixture to make the rock biter. <laughs> now I see why you pit this cat. So those are his feet and he's in a sitting position. I added a little paper clay on the bottom so I had a surface to stick the tinfoil balls on. And now I'm just layering some glue and water over the tissue paper, basically kind of to almost glue him down as well as sculpt him at the same time. I find that the paper clay and the paper mache mixture work really well together. Tin foil makes a great filler. It allows you to use less clay and it also helps dry your piece faster because you're not using like a big solid piece of clay. The rock biter's toes are just solid balls of the air drying clay and I just use my little clay tools to blend them into the rest of the foot. So now that the rock biter is positioned where I want him to be, I'm going to take a break from him for a little bit and let him dry and then work on the trees some more. I'll be going back and forth between the trees and the rock biter just to add drying time as well as I'm just kind of planning as I go so I might want to add a little bit more trees here and there and get the spacing as needed. So I'm adding a tree here in the foreground. I could have used tin foil to make the tree. I am just using this tree shape and then I'll be adding a mixture of the air drying clay as well as the paper mache tissue paper mixture. I am shaping out his body and then his arms. Now I'm shaping and sizing his head, getting it in the spot I want. I also added tin foil to his head as well before I added the layer of air drying clay. Here is one of his arms. And I'm shaping his hand. I'm using a mixture of clay tools and paintbrushes to get the texture and the shape I want. And here is his other arm. Now I'm deciding where I want to place his eyes. There's a few different versions of the rock biter and I'm making my own take on the rock biter and I want him to have these kind eyes. 
and I'm just using small pre-made glass eyes that have a pin on the back side and I'm poking them right in to the air drying clay. And then I will take them out. I'll have the placement of where they're supposed to be, but now I can easily shape his nose. So now I'm sculpting his nose and his nose will change a little bit throughout the build. The great thing about air drying clay is after it dries, you can add more air drying clay to it or the tissue paper and change it up as you go. I decide his nose nostrils need to be a little bit bigger in the end so you'll notice his nose nostril area is a little bit wider. So with this guy, since he's made from rocks, I'm not looking for a smooth texture. I am looking for something that's very rock-like, has lots of bumps and crannies and not perfect. So that's the look I'm going for. Adding his thumb to his hand right there. They look like big, good, strong hands, don't they? It was midnight in the howling forest. The wind whistled through the tops of the ancient trees. I painted the entire base of the floor or the forest ground green. I'm gonna add some moss and different foliage down there and just in case something shows through, I just wanna kinda of add, make it green. I don't know if I necessarily needed to do that, but I did it anyways. And adding some more character to the trees. I just love making these trees. You can just make them as whimsical as you want. So I'm going to be adding different shading to the trees using layers of black and brown. When painting rocks, the undertones have yellows and reds and browns in them. So I'm gonna be adding a little bit of undertones. And now I'm doing the dry brushing on the trees. I'm going over with some black and then I'll go lighter brown and then I'll go again over with some grayish white and that just brings out all the texture in the trees and it looks amazing. Check that out. Dry brushing is the magic of making trees. So to paint the rock biter, I first added those undertones and then I'm doing this in layers. I probably added a little bit more clay here and there because I wanted to thicken them up. And then I'm adding some washes of browns and blacks and you just kind of let this pour down and dab off where you need it and you just keep layering it. Layering again is the trick and then dry brushing is the trick. So I'm going over with a dry brush of gray and then lighter grays and darker grays and some blacks and some whites and that will bring all the texture of the rocks out on the rock biter. Excuse the out of focus bits. When I get my hand in there, it wants to focus on my hand and not the project. Haven't quite figured out how to fix this. I get sucked in so much to my piece that I forget where my hand is in relation to the camera. So he's a rock writer, he needs some teeth. So I'm just adding his teeth in here. They look a little goofy at first and then I'm going to add a little bit of wash over his teeth to blend them in.
and I almost forgot he needs some ears so I added some ears to him <laughs> I forgot about his ears but there we go we have some ears on our rock biter now and then I'm just blending them in as needed and then I'll add the paint and washes on top and now I'm going to be adding some moss so I'm just putting down some school glue and then I'm going to place this moss. This moss I actually collected from a yard and then I dried it out in the oven to make sure anything that was living on it was no longer. And it's great if you can collect stuff from your own backyard, that is amazing. I have tons of moss and it peels up like blankets. It's awesome. So I'm just placing the moss all over the ground. I'm also adding a moss look to the trees and I'm using fine faux grass. I paint a little glue on and then I sprinkle this little faux grass all over it and it looks really cool on the trees. So with this series, I'm making what I call a 3D graphic novel. I am going to have diorama sections kind of like the photos in a graphic novel and each will be its own scene and so I'm adding the cover to this diorama and then I added lights because it kind of gets dark in there I just hot glued some fairy lights in place and then I'm gonna hide all my glue with this clump foliage So I flipped the camera here. He's actually upside down. So there's no magic involved right here. I'm just adding some more of that foliage to hide the wiring. So now I'm making Bulb the Will-O-Wisp. The Will-O-Wisp is not in the movie, but he's an important part of this scene. So I came up with this idea for the Will-O-Wisp because he's like a glowing fairy-ish like creature but appears like a glowing ball and is always bouncing around really fast and so this is my vision. I don't, didn't know if this was going to work. So with the mask, I have my UV resin and then I'm filling up this silicone ball and using this little light that flickers all kinds of different colors. And then I added some different little cellophane and glitter to the ball. And now I am hardening it, crossing fingers that it works. And it is hard. And now I'm going to pull off that silicone. And we have a Will-O-Wisp. I think it turned out great. I am very happy with the end result. And I'll be hiding the little mechanism amongst the trees so you won't see that in the end. I'm gonna add some foliage to the silver part and then I'll hide the rest in the trees. So now it's time to add the other friends of the forest. I made Gluck Gluck and his racing snail and the night hob and his bat and I'll link all those videos in the description. My little friend, the little man with his racing snail. The night hub, even the stupid bear. You'll notice that my characters are different from the movie version, but I kind of went with a mixture of the movie and the books and my own idea of what the characters would be and came up with these guys. Now I'm just adding a little bit more details. I'm adding some rocks out of my yard and I made some extra little plants for pops of color. And good trick, if you have hot glue strands everywhere, take your blow dryer on its heat setting and melt those hot glue strands away. Another good trick is get some faux flowers and just repurpose them and make them into your own version. I used some flower petals and I used some faux greenery and I made little plants out of them. And now I'm just adding some wash to everything just to kind of bring the colors all together. I want it to also look like it has a little texture. I'm also adding some dried leaves, some faux grass, and some Spanish moss to the scene just to add a variety of vegetation. I like a lot of texture to my pieces. I think it adds a lot of character to the diorama. And 
And here it is. Here is all my friends. They meet up in the forest. This is the rock biter. We have Vushazul and his bat. He's also called the Nighthawk. We have Gluck Gluck and his racing snail and the Will Wisp. I wanted to show you guys. This is my plan. I talked about making this kind of 3D graphic novel. And I was hoping to show you all my idea of how it's going to go. This will be one of the scenes in the full on diorama. So you'll have this guy and then we'll have Bastion reading his book. And then I wanted to make the bookstore right about here. So, and then I will like make it neater between the seams and whatnot. I don't know if this is gonna help anybody visualize what I'm attempting to do here, but this is my idea. So you'll have the different uh, pictures of the story and then it'll all come together and then I will be doing more, more scenes under here. Hope that helps with anybody who is curious of what I was going for. Awkward. Oh, Chanelis. All right, let's take this right here. I'll be linking the different chapters of my projects in the description. Let me know if you have any ideas for this series. I can always add to these projects as we go as well. So if you have any extra ideas of what I need to add to the scenes, please let me know. Please like and subscribe and ring that bell so you'll get the notifications of when the next one's coming out. I try to make a video every week. It happens more every other week these days just with having kids and all, it gets a little tricky. I'm really excited how this is coming along. My vision is getting put together. Thanks for watching everybody. Let's check out the final results.